Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Today we are 25 of April 2023. And around the table we have myself, Damien Duportal, Stéphane Merle, Mark Waits, and Kevin Martin. Hello Kevin, welcome. Uh, Hervé Lemer won't be available today. Um, Let's get started with the announcement. So the weekly 2.402, uh, at least the war was published. Uh, I haven't checked the uh, package and Docker image status, but I assume it will be available soon. Um, <clears throat> uh, release, okay. Package and Docker image incoming. Um, yeah, I don't have other, uh, yes, um, announcement. We have CI Jenkins IO that is suffering uh, a disruption, not the controller itself, but we had an issue uh, with the agents. So mm -hmm. the- um, We have a little uh, problem with the weekly. So right now, Digital Ocean is currently uh, uh, underling the builds for CI Jenkins IO. So that should be okay. The, the worst case was we had a 15 builds in the queue and these, been, these builds are being treated. So the impact is not, is not high, but still an impact. Status Jenkins IO is up to date. Uh, the next step will be to destroy and create the Kubernetes cluster used for running the ephemeral agents. Um, I, I relaunched the packaging for the weekly. It's oh, same, it failed. same error like usual, like okay. last time. Like. Um, outage today. Switched to digital ocean for container agents. Uh, the root cause of the issue is a combination of human and technical problem. The human was me. The human uh, in cause uh, wanted to configure that cluster to use in the permission admini in administration for permission system to map the new AWS accounts that uh, CloudBase provided us. We did the change on the cluster hosting the ACP for AWS last week, which went very well. And me, I wanted to have access from my local machine in order to test the work I'm doing on the bomb builds. And in that process, I sent the pull requests as usual that should have updated these elements. So that's the human error. I should not have done that. Um, the technical error is because that cluster was created with a Terraform system, but it was created and that's the real human error. And I'm sure I'm the one who did it, but I can't remember. It has been created with an AWS technical user account on a machine. Instead of using the remote uh, system Infra CI, because it was broken, we had to go quick. So the owner of the cluster was a user that has been deleted since. And we failed, we, even with the help of CloudBase admin, to recreate the same user. So what happened is that when we tried to reconfigure the, uh, the, that cluster to manage identities, the mechanism is use what is called a Kubernetes config map. That maps help Kubernetes to map its technical and administrator users with the official AWS. It's not. It's only for the airbag, so it's not the security of authentication. You are already authenticated. And what happened is that that cluster was created with automatic management of that config map. Then there has been a major upgrade of the Terraform module that stopped absolutely managing this. So we had to stop managing. Then we had to manage it manually. And then AWS updated the way the API managed that. So the module started again managing it. But our attempts to uh, manage it through Terraform a second time failed. And now I understand why, because the config map syntax was broken. So we were using a kind of might work, might, might not work. 
And where is it important? Because that half broken config map was still fulfilling our needs. And it was working since six months until someone tried to update it for adding the new user to the administration list. And Terraform, hit a, uh, the Terraform module hit a edge case where it said, oh, I should first delete the config map and then update it because the changes are not worth a simple update. So if it would have updated like it should in most of the cases, like it did with the other cluster last week, then it would have updated in the list, added the new user, removed the other, and the other technical user would have been kept. In, but instead it deleted the config map. So now the cluster says, oh, that list, that empty list is the list of administrator able to do anything and connect. The list is empty with, with, because it has been deleted. So no one is able to connect to the cluster. We were locked out. The only exception would have been the user who created that cluster, which was deleted. So no super admin, no more admin. We are locked out. The only thing we can do is deleting the cluster now. Yeah, quite an adventure. Uh, that should be operational later today. Anyway, we have DigitalOcean uh, managing the build. So if I'm not able uh, to finish today, I will finish uh, without a lot of stress tomorrow. The impact will be if we have bomb builds until it's back to the normal, the impact will be this bomb build will wait and we might have a big queue. So be careful. Hey, why don't you we use digital ocean since Friday? That's the thing I want to mention now. I think we can start publicly uh, stating that's the third announcement. What a week. So Friday, end of day in Europe, uh, digital ocean sent us an abuse report. So an automatic system failed to ban, uh, mentioned to them that an IP that digital ocean identified to one of ours, at least at the time the fail to ban is pointing it, and that IP was used for brute force SSH attack. That's the pitch. <laughs> so, so brute yeah. force SSH from one of the IP addresses that, interesting, okay, and? So first thing, that's the reason why we disabled DigitalOcean because this is the only remediation we were able to have and we were waiting until the incident today, uh, but we never had any feedback from the Digital Ocean support or security team. So it's been four days. If I exclude the weekends, it's two working days. Uh, was yesterday a day off in the US, Mark? No, no, no? it okay, was so not. It's two working days. So I'm, I'm gonna ask Gavin for help to escalate, just to have a feedback. So we did a due diligence analysis and trust me, we, we went pretty far in the analysis. The IPs are ephemeral IPs because our machines are ephemeral. So when the abuse report was received, the machine did not, wasn't existing anymore since ours. Mm. We found an IP corresponding to one of the Kubernetes worker nodes used by CI Jenkins IO in digital ocean. That is a fact. We tried to, search in the time window uh, that was reported. So I don't remember, the fail to ban was reporting GMT plus two and the machine was up at that moment. Mm. So problem number one is that we weren't able to detect any malicious pod. There were only one bomb build with free agent running on that cluster at that moment for the, for the whole life cycle of the machine. No logs at all except the usual logs of bomb builds. So we, we had to read each line, line by line for these agents. It did uh, its work. No SSH traffic and the uh, pull request and the change is a Maven dependency. So for sure it's not the bomb builds. Hmm. We, were, we didn't see any activity to DigitalOcean except this free container from CI Jenkins IO. So if the attacker was able to find a flow in Jenkins, that means they are able to remove their tracks on the controller and the agent and the Datadog metrics and the Datadog logs. So if someone was able to find such a flow, I mean, they deserve 
to break our platform. And without joking, there is no harm in that area, except it's annoying to being blacklisted for one hour. Then we checked the technical system on Kubernetes, assuming that the Kubernetes node was pwned, meaning not the application pod, but the rest. Um, Datadog did not report any network request using the SSH protocol mm -hmm. and not using the IP uh, that were reported as a target of the brute force attack. So that means if we were pwned, the person was able to remove the data from Datadog. But the API key that we use does not allow deleting right. data. So, so, yeah, so and we didn't find yeah. any any graphical of of uh, um, network um, flow. outbound flow yeah. from from uh, digital system. They, I I think they don't provide it, but uh, I didn't find any. They, they they do, and it was empty for that because we were oh. able to see the outbound flow of the agent on the port. 50,000 connecting back to the controller oh. using TCP level, level protocol. We were able to see DNS resolution outbound calls, but no SSH call at all. In, in digital cell, will you find that? Oh, no, no, sorry, in, oh, sorry, in Datadog, my bad. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. I, I, I thought about digital cell Digi because yeah. it's another digital way. Ocean, yeah. yeah, true, digital cell does not provide that kind of metrics. Yeah. We try to remediate by enabling, um, uh, more restrictive uh, firewall rules. So the goal would be to say, hey, these machines and these pods should only be allowed to go to the internet on the AT or, or, or HTTPS, HTTP or inbound agent protocols. Thing is, digital send does not allow you to customize the firewall rules. There is a firewall with manage and its lifecycle is driven by the Kubernetes cluster. And each time you change the rules, after two or three minutes, the rules are reset. And of course, the default rules are allow all outbound protocol to all IPs. Right. So that's why I asked them for help. Like, OK, I really want to restrict the outbound traffic from my Kubernetes cluster, but I think you have a feature issue on your product there. That's, alas, not a nice feedback, but that's a feedback and a request for announcement to them. So that's why we decided with the weekend to disable the cluster at all. And we just re-enabled it. So we'll see if we will be target. Uh, my gut feeling uh, wild guess is that the time that fail to ban reports is not what it says. I think they might have a time zone issue. And since these IPs are shared between customers, that could have been another customer. But that's a wild guess and cannot prove it. So that's why we ask them for help. Um, we will write down an issue, this milestone, with the, the tracks we have, because we didn't receive any answer from DigitalOcean. So perhaps we keep on. Um, as I mentioned on the email discussion, that's also for us um, an incentive for thinking, do should we continue using the Kubernetes cluster in DigitalOcean? Um, because we have a lot of obstacle, it cannot scale down to zero. For a CI system, that's quite an issue. Uh, that costs between 200 and 800 bucks per month, depending on the size of the machine. And it's forbid us to try using bigger machines to pack more pods, because that one machine will cost us a lot, even if it's doing nothing. So this and the firewall rules that we cannot apply so we cannot secure properly the Kubernetes cluster, it starts to be an annoyance in our use case. So instead, um, I'm bringing back the idea that came from Gavin Morgan. Since there is a Jenkins plugin to spin up virtual machine digital ocean, we could switch instead of using Kubernetes cluster, remove that Kubernetes cluster from DO, and instead build custom virtual machine. We can only support Linux, but at least we could have all the ATH machines that are now only on Azure. We could use DigitalOcean for that instead. Mm -hmm. um, that's a proposal on the table right now, no required action because we have other things to fix, <laughs> thanks to me. <laughs> uh, so that, these are the major elements. Is there any question or things unclear on these three announcements?
if we do that, we will not have any spare Kubernetes for to replace CI Kubernetes if it's dying. Yes, when someone break it. Um, I, I, I point no one. Uh, AKS could be used. We could create a cluster in AKS that would have the benefit of supporting Windows not pool and IRM64 not pool. So same mm -hmm. feature set as AWS. But that means the money we spend on the virtual machine today on Azure, first we need to move them to digital ocean. So we have enough room for yeah. writing in terms of cost in Azure back again. But that's a good point. Once you will have finished trusted, I think that could be your next mission. Yeah, next year. Um, issue with details to open this week. No impact as far as we can tell. Might be a false positive. Incentive to use VMs instead of Kubernetes in Dio. Any question? And from me. Okay, so next week is next week as usual. We will be the 2 of May. Uh, next LTS. Let me check. Is it next week? It is. During the, <clears throat> yeah, May 3. Yeah, 2.387.3. Cool. So as, as we wrote, Kristen is release lead. As far as I can tell, I even see any email about Jenkins advisor, security advisories, so none. And next major event, still CDCon in Vancouver, eight and nine. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Is there something else on the upcoming calendar? Question. Okay, so let's start on what were we able to finish during the past milestone? That was quite a busy week. Um, our CI Jenkins IO, we don't use the job config history plugin anymore. That was a lot of inodes and files. So that's a good thing. Um, I, I took a shortcut for this one. Instead of first enabling the full automatic backup and then etc., cetera, uh, the backup cost money so better to have a backup based on an initial snapshot, which is as small as possible. And as we discussed during the week, um, we might want to create a new data disk for the incoming new CI Jenkins IO virtual machine. And with the effort that Stefan and then Mark and then I did on the data disk and the data of the Jenkins home, we were able to shrink the data from almost yeah, almost 600 gigabytes, full disk three weeks ago. Today, we only use 250. So more than half decrease. That might decrease even more with the newest free artifact manager. We'll see a bit later. So the idea is that better to, uh, I took a snapshot of the current data just to be sure if job config history was, broke something, we could go back in time. That was the most important thing done for that task. The next step will be, A, let's create a new data disk, which, is be, which will be cheaper. Yes, half the size. And trust me, these premium SSDs cost something. And then we can start the backups from that initial 250 gigabyte instead of the 600 that we had before. That's the shortcut I took, uh, validated uh, in 101 with uh, Team Yacom, just to be sure I wasn't crazy. The reason why I urge that issue is that I thought it could help regarding the BOM uh, pipeline steps that are slow as hell. That the thing is I tried and it's not. It's not helping here. It's helping on yeah. other area. It's still valuable, but it's not decreasing the minutes uh, reported for an operation that should take only seconds. But that was worth a try. And at mm -hmm. least now, instead of 80% usage of inodes on, yes, inodes on the data disk, now it's less than 22%. Yeah, we had nine years 
of history of configuration for that controller. That's a lot of XML files, trust me. <laughs> um, so we had uh, a Jira component archived. After long, long discussion on exchanges, we chose AWS S3 instead of Azure Blob Storage for Artifact Manager on CI Jenkins IO. The goal is CI Jenkins IO when there is a stash, unstash, or archive artifact operation, it's sent inside an S3 bucket. Most of the, let's say, EV builds, the BOM builds and the part of the plugins are already running on AWS. So the agent stash to an S3 buckets and unstash on the other. If we are doing that from a container on DigitalOcean, which we don't since Friday, or a virtual machine on Azure for ATH, um, iMemory builds for Jenkins Core and some of the plugin that use Docker CE, then we will still have outbound bandwidth to pay for from the cloud to AWS. But there is no absolute solution unless we use a single cloud because whatever cloud we select for storing and archiving this data, we will have outbound and inbound. So here at least we won't store data and we won't put pressure on CI Jenkins IO. And for the BOM build, it helps. It helps a lot because the stash and stash, not only they are heavy, but also it allows us to go back to the pattern we built the war one time and then we distribute it. The unstash operation went from five minutes to 20 seconds, thanks to that change for a single step in the worst case. Wait a second. So that was the unstash from S3 bucket to local to local Agent. workspace. Yes. Wow. Excellent. That one, Thank yeah. you. That one is efficient because everything is on the same AWS region. The additional costs uh, will never be more than 100 bucks per month. That's the higher limit that we could reach given the size we used to have for archive artifacts. So that's an acceptable cost. Yeah, when we will, uh, sorry? That's because we don't pay for the, the bandwidth because we're in the same region, that's so why. So including the outbound bandwidth. I did the cost analysis. Yeah. Worst case, it will be 100 bucks per month on the AWS account, which in, either, uh, in the target we have 5,000 bucks per month. That will be 2% of the budget. Today, it's less than 1%. So nice. Uh, we already saw metrics, so that, that one is okay. Uh, and yeah, we can proceed. Uh, request for installing GitHub, GitPod.io, GitHub application on Jenkins Infra for Jenkins IO, that's been done. So the benefit is that users should be able to spin up GitHub, uh, GitPod.io. Um, we now have a default build discard policy. So if a job on CI Jenkins IO does not specify explicitly a discard, or a discard builds policy, then it will be only the five last item. Um, so, that's, so it is allowed for someone to, for a job to declare its own discard policy that's larger than that though. Exactly. Okay, all right. Exactly, Good. it's only if there are none applied to the job configuration. Right. We might, that, that one might have zero effects because we use GitHub organization scanning. And I realized that last time the three of us tried and checked, we missed the, the builds policy. We looked at the orphan item policy, which is GitHub repository to uh, inside organization and then branches inside multi-branches that stopped there. And there is a specific trait, which is named build discarder policy that we missed. So we might have to rescan every build and think about that setting. And that's the setting we missed. And I understand that if, not, if it's not set up, then there is one defined by default, meaning it negates the effect of this one. My yeah, guess okay. is that that one is efficient for pipeline or multi-branch only when they are alone. And how long has that been in place uh, on the order of one or more days? When, when was it implemented? When was the build, oh, discard, the build, global discarder? build discarder implemented? I don't remember exactly. It, it was more than a day ago. Yeah, absolutely. No, no need to look it up, Damien. I was just concerned if there were a performance issue with, because I assume it sweeps mm -hmm. all, all builds across the whole system and the system is large. So if there were a performance issue, we would have heard about it by now. Oh, it's not an active thread system. 
it's when there is a job when there is a job scanning whatever level you are uh, the job scanning says oh do i have one yes okay. i apply it otherwise i i get the the default one got it okay thank you thanks for that no problem um let us the virtual machine that used to run either jira or confluence i never remember has been cleaned up there were a lot of uh, that was confluence because there were a lot of wiki data so following uh, alerting changes done last week by the team, that one started to send issue and it was using a lot of disk with UNUS data. So it was cleaned up. Thanks Harvey for that part. Um, CI Jenkins IO, we switch the hard drive to a standard SSD. The latency is still the same, but there are partitions and block issues. And we realize that the instance is a generation one in Azure, which is still sold, that has been created long ago, that doesn't use a new FE for boot. It's a whole BIOS with backward compatibilities. So that explains why the new SSD is not automatically um, uh, used on the old size, because we increase the size from 50 to 64, because we pay the same. So instead of trying to tinker with that system disk, the proposal that uh, everyone made independently, and when we share, we say, oh, we all agree, is that as part of the Ubuntu 22.04 campaign, we will create a brand new virtual machine with new data disk, new setup already in place that should be the next CI Jenkins IO on the correct network. And we will do a snapshot and then air sync synchronization of the data disk. So we will use the new data disk I mentioned before with a backup policy, everything manages code, so we should be able to trash that machine when the time will come. Hoping that will also increase performances. We did a change that, that backfired. Uh, we had a rule that was alerting us on pager duty when one of the tracked disk partitions was using uh, less than one gigabyte. So the idea of, targeting warning at 80% of uh, usage and alerting at 19. First point, it's alerting at 80 and at 19. So there might be a misunderstanding on the way we have to set up Datadog. So more work is required on that one. So, And that helped us to track that we have lettuce that was full, as I said, and also some of our uh, node pools on the private cluster used for infra CI and release CI. Um, we were able to help a user about creating an account. There has been an issue with the DNS record repo mavenapache.org outside our system. And we had to fix uh, missing virtual machine images. Uh, that was a garbage collector a bit too aggressive. That has been fixed and now we have added uh, security. So uh, that should not happen again. Okay, already 30 minutes. Wow. <coughs> Am I too, talking too much? No. Next step. Uh, I, I'm going to go a bit uh, faster. So first step, we have issues opened. Let, let me try to regroup. That will be easier. Uh, let me use correct indentation. First, email issues. So we have accounts that does, who doesn't receive their emails in some time. So let me try accounts, Jenkins, IO, and email errors. We have a second one. So for this one, the solution is um, we are going to migrate the SunGrid SMTP system the current the one that is currently used by account Jenkins IO to send email, we don't have access to it. As per uh, Kosuke feedbacks, there should there can only be one account at a time on the free plan. Uh, as pointed by uh, Tim and Olivier, as we seen last week, the idea will be to use a SunGrid managed system on Azure or the Mailgun account that we have access to. Our goal is to have a, an email sending system that we can access and manage. So we can diagnose the issue for these users. That's the goal. Let me updates. There is a second issue I will add it later, oh, this one. 
So there has been a first step, Hervé earlier today was able to, to enable the use of Mailgun accounts. So most of the email were sent except the one to Google, free emails were blocked. There is a whatever email system, I don't have any knowledge on that part that needs to be solved. DMARC uh, issue. Yeah. We need to check uh, uh, DMARC, uh, DKM, and and uh, look at the other one. Like okay. You. Um, tried with Mailgun, but it's a DMARC issue with Gmail. So right now, uh, reverted to old sun grids, so the service continue to work. Um, question for you, Stefan. Do you think that we will have to uh, run back using Mailgun in order to diagnose and fix the issue? Uh, or is there a way to test? No, we have, we have to, no, we, there's a way to test, but the problem is that they had some some errands, some uh, legacy uh, for the mark that was uh, stopping mail to be sent. In fact, there is already something in the system, in the DNS for the mark that's stopping sending mail. So the 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 fact that we got uh, uh, blocked is normal because we asked to. Okay, but we have to work around because that, that's not only the mark we have to deal with all all the the setup before enabling it, and there is third party website that allow us to check some of part of the of the configuration at least the the DNS port. Okay. That's quite clear. Uh, um, uh, does my note capture what you said? Except individually, but yes. Yes. These are collaborative notes. Don't hesitate to fix my typo. <laughs> Good job. Open up your. Oh no, you can directly edit it in <laughs> real time. <laughs> Okay, thanks. The explanation is clear and makes sense to me. So I assume that, uh, so Hervé had to travel, so that's why we roll back. Uh, as soon as uh, he's able, is there, uh, we will have to sync. I will mark this that he has to anticipate that part, so you should be able to get some availability to help him. Because I, I want to attend, I will learn a lot, but my knowledge in email is close to zero. I don't even know what the DMARC is, so I, I can be there and watch you, but I yeah. stopped working on email uh, just when that came out and we were more using the other ones. So okay. I'm brand new to that too, but they're all Yeah, but my knowledge is close to zero, so I fully <laughs> delegate that to uh, Hervé okay. and you, and I will learn on the process for sure. With pleasure. Um, Stefan, a word on trusted CI migration from AWS to Azure. What is the status? I uh, I deal right now with the one VM, which is Boons, uh, um, operated by Terraform. That's a, a, a bl brand new one with nothing in there. I'm starting with only this one because I first started with every VM and that was way too much. So I had to lower down my my uh, target and and iterate so i'm back to one vm and i'm uh, almost ready for a second review cool so first review done ready for second yes and then next steps will be uh, first the next? network we need to uh, uh, to uh, put some uh, some firewalls and and stuff, and then we will go ahead with another VM, and then the last one. Then controller VM, then and, and permanent, perma agent. permanent agent VM. Nice. Yes. Let me correct um, that, I can do that. <laughs> Something on the way, I'm writing it. I'm not sure about the priority. I think there is, it can be done in parallel. I can do it while you work on the rest, but I want to mark it. You discover that currently the, um, uh, there is a resource group and a network used for the ephemeral agent of the actual trusted CI, which is running on AWS. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that that resource group and its resources are on US East region on Azure, while 
most of our networks and setup and the new VM will be on US East too. So True, yes. we could start updating that part in parallel on what you are doing. So then we, we wouldn't have the agent uh, far away from the controller. Yes. A change, new, change, region to US East 2. Yeah, and we choose Order. US East 2 to be um, close to uh, uh, private K8S. Absolutely. So I'm writing this down. No need for you to act immediately. That's not priority, but it's written. So we will think about it before of the final migration. Thanks. Uh, work in progress now on my side uh, about splitting the BOM, the BOM build with the other. So uh, the status is, uh, as commented on the issue, uh, we tried with a new node pool that worked very well and were able to experiment. That new node pool, different than the current one, was using bigger machines where instead of three pods at the same time, it's able to handle 23 at the same time. The goal was first having less machines, less cost per pod, and the ability to treat a single bomb bill in less than 30 minutes. That was a failure because there is a contention somewhere. We will ask uh, for help. That might be CI Jenkins IU virtual machine. We are sure it's not the job config history anymore and it's not the system drive, but as if there was a lock or throttling somewhere. We played around with the CPU limits, but if the CPU is not throttled, then all the CPU is used and the machines are dying. So right now the proposal is to still deliver values to the end user by creating a new node pool, which is the exact same as the current one, but separated. So plugin builds will be in parallel of the bomb builds. So one not pool identical at the current one <clears throat> to deliver the split. Experiments with a bigger not pool is not good enough. So not delivering it for now. So the value is again ensuring that any builds that require Linux container, which is not BOM builds, don't have to wait for resources if there is a BOM builds currently being run. Only the BOM builds should compete with each other. That should also ensure that the probability of a spot machine being evicted will be lower for plugin developers than for BOM developers. Um, blocked by the ci.jenkins.io cluster lock out. So mechanically, we will continue next week with that issue tomorrow or later today. No question? No. Ubuntu 2204. Thanks, Stefan, for the help on that one. So this week, we were able to migrate the open VPN image, and it worked. No, it worked. Uh, I, I spent one hour debugging and trying it now because OpenSSL um, had to fix minor issues that were creating uh, errors because OpenSSL went from 1.1.1 to 3. something. Um, had to fine tune. The certificates, the, the certificate authorities, because the new OpenSSL, the interaction with the LDAP client is a bit different. And it's not checking the ashes of the CA certs in the same way. It was able to use directly the CA certs from one of the lists. So the CA cert is the Let's Encrypt X1 in that case for LDAP. And now, as part of the image build, there uh, we need to to specify uh, an environment variable to LDAP environment. So it directly goes to the file on the storage instead of searching for the hash on the SSL certificate. So after finding a lot of people do having the same issues, was able to test it with a LDAP search commands, 
that was failing connecting in TLS. So that was uh, obviously open OpenSSL and had to run it on debug mode to see the error and then it worked. Thanks Stefan for testing all of this on production while I wasn't available. That helped a lot because now we have a up-to-date image for Docker OpenVPN. Next steps for Ubuntu 22. <clears throat> Trusted CI, CI.g, eventually the AKS not pulls. So that one is a wrapper tasks. I'll see on that because uh, there is no dedicated action required to this one. So if it's okay, I won't add this issue on the milestone. Doesn't serve to have a wrap. It's a kind of epic. Doesn't make sense. I'm only using it to reference other tasks that have the direct impact of bumping the Ubuntu 22. Is that okay? Um, <clears throat> decrease AWS costs. So the good news is that we are forecasted at 30, uh, less than 14, between 30 and 14, 13 and 14. Okay. Yeah, and with the, the lockout, lock we'll have less, even less. <laughs> You did a good job. Absolutely. So uh, that was yesterday, it was 14, and today it was even uh, lower. Um, the impact, we were able to clean up the snapshots and to keep them clean, the snapshot of the MEIs. So that's already 80 bucks per day. So that's already 1.5 to 2K per month. Also, we changed the, the instance kind used for the, the, the node pool. And as you can see, uh, that has a direct effect. We were able to decrease drastically because these node pools are cheaper. They have less chances, chances to be evicted as spot instances. And the usage is clearly uh, better for the, the kind of workload we have. So we use the same can for the new node pool uh, I'm, I'm, I mentioned earlier. Uh, we could even optimize by watching the metrics next month, but it already has an impact. Um, so next month, we will have to carefully watch this area. So I hope by moving the update center and trusted, we should be able to remove four to 5K per month from that bill. That should allow us to make it sustainable. So we had, uh, we made good efforts that are visible, but it's not enough. So it's positive, but we need to keep continue working on this one. Um, no expected action next, next week. So I won't put that on the next milestone that will be on the backlog because there is no immediate action for us right now on that specific topic. Yeah, but, but moving trusted will have an impact and moving everything will have an impact. Exactly. Um, Make environment and description fields mandatory. So um, I saw before the meeting that there is an action expected from the Jira administrator. The consensus was reached. So I need to check if I can do it or if I can ask Mark or Daniel because I'm not totally sure on that kind of setup. So I might ask them for help, but uh, by default, I take care of it as a Jira administrator. A word under uh, might need help from at mark wait to apply this setup got to check and ask in the issue if needed um a word about renewing the update center certificates thanks uh, stefan for preparing the that part uh, so i was able to meet with olivier so initially we wanted uh, to ask the board if I can have access to the uh, CA key, but the board has been uh, delayed. So I won't, we won't have answer before eight or nine of May. So I've asked Olivier yesterday if he can at least generate a, a six months valid certificate for the update center instead of the usual one year. Six months, why? Because that will force us to consider the who has access to the key in six months. Uh, I haven't heard from Olivier. I should have met him today physically, but he had a cancellation. So we'll try to uh, to harass him a bit, <laughs> just so he can unblock us. Still no emergency, but I would prefer doing it before it expires to avoid issues. 
So stay tuned. I'm moving that issue um, uh, for for new cert from Olivier and next board for the key to Damien. Um, no thing to do. I will remove that from the next milestone. And if I, uh, I have news from Olivier, I will add it to the next milestone. Is that okay for you? So I've opened an issue about CI Jenkins IO use a new VM instance type. Uh, so the goal is, as we said earlier, to create a brand new virtual machine, like uh, what Stefan is doing on Trusted. That's the same pattern, but for CI. That one might be a bit different. No need for bounds or privacy. That's a public instance. Um, <clears throat> that will be Ubuntu 20.204. A new data disk with Azure backup policies and security groups. And then we should be able to configure it and try the puppet port. Stefan, is it OK if I start this one as soon as possible to work on the, Ubu on the puppet port running on Ubuntu 20.04? So the time you create the infrastructure for the free trusted, I will work on this one. So you should be able to have a working Puppet model because right now Puppet might fail on Ubuntu 2204. For okay, yeah, 2204. Setting... Okay, you said 22. Uh, so yeah, Sorry, 2204. On the latest version. Um, yes, the, yes, go ahead. When I say awesome. Puppet, I mean the Puppet profile that is in charge of creating a Jenkins controller. We know for a fact, based on Hervé's work, that Puppet works properly because the private VPN machine is already Ubuntu 22.04. So it's already working on that, on that part. But we still need to test way more profiles and stuff. OK. Looks good? Yeah, perfect. So we can parallelize. And when will be the time for you to uh, bootstrap Puppet agent on this machine? The work should already be done for you. Is awesome. that OK if we split yeah. the bill like this? Yeah, perfect. OK. Uh, migrate Google Analytics to v4. I'm also waiting for Olivier. <laughs> Olivier gave me administration permission on the property of Google Analytics that need updates to, Virtu to v4. However, in order to migrate the current property to v4, I need to be administrator of the whole analytics space, not only the property. So, yeah, I'm waiting for him. I will try also to harass, harass him nicely. Maybe you should offer him a coffee, you know? Oh, more than that, I will, I will <laughs> buy the, the drinks will be on me. <laughs> um, let's start ASAP. We'll, uh, I need to take note. We'll test match Puppet Profile. Jenkins controller on Ubuntu 20.04. Before Stefan Merle has to do it on trusted.ci. A new data disk, smaller. In the new network, new instance size and v2 and v2 you mean gen 2 yes generation 2 ubuntu 2004 2204 2204 thanks Fully and the backup from scratch backup policy for data disk and not knack up. <laughs> I was about to change it. Thanks for that disk. Fully managed by Terraform with audit trial. Perfect. OK. Um, Google Analytics, PKG origin Jenkins IO with the Puppet agent doing some noise. It's not an important task. I didn't have time on this one. Just add any um, analytics right now. I'm removing that one from the next milestone because I feel like I won't have the required time. I will add it back if needed. Uh, back to backlog until it's too annoying. <laughs> 
uh, add launchable to agent. So Hervé uh, had an interesting exchange with Basil. Uh, it appears that there is a need for also installing launchable on Windows. So right now it's the case for the Windows VM already, not the case for the container, Windows container on ACI. Um, Basil had a high hopes on decreasing time for some builds and tests of some EV workloads uh, once it will be done. So Hervé will work uh, with after the email on that topic to provide launchable command line install on ACI agents. Uh, hoping to unblock Basil on that part, and that includes a bit of pipeline library setup. Thanks, uh, Hervé. Thanks, Basil, for that work. That's really useful because we could decrease the, the machine time on the infrastructure. And so the money. Absolutely. Windows container agent to unblock Basil. Already on all other agent on CI Jenkins IO and Windows VMs. A word about the artifact caching proxy being unreliable. There are two errors. I'm keeping that one on a milestone. The first kind of errors are related to DigitalOcean. So we didn't add any of these errors since weeks because DigitalOcean is not used or almost not. Uh, splitting the bomb builds to their own node pool on AWS means we won't use DigitalOcean for bomb builds anymore. So that issue will be gone. Or almost gone with the bomb node pool. About the Azure um, connection, connection errors, um, that one is a TCP level problem, mainly due to the fact that the virtual machine agent are running on US East on a specific network, while ACP is on US East too on another network. So part of the new CI machine will be to migrate these agents directly uh, on the new network. But for that, that requires to also migrate CI Jenkins IO. Because right now the Linux virtual machines are using SSH, which means the controller need to be able to reach the machines. However, uh, thanks Tim for the new feature, uh, published a new Azure VM feature, agent plugins feature, inbound protocol. That means we should be able at any moment to configure the agents to contact CI Jenkins IO, which is public. So we should try this to migrate the agent like we should do for trusted. But in the case of CI, that should be easier with the new plugin. Uh, um, issue related to networks regions that should help us migrating agent workload closer to ACP. So thanks, Tim, and thanks, Basil, for reporting and helping on that topic. Stefan, can you remind me? My brain is already full. Uh, the status of the <laughs> Azure RM64 VM templates. Uh, this one is uh, is not easy. In fact, I managed to have a build from a, a um, paper for RM64 in Azure. Yes. Um, the like problem build. that I, I bumped in was with the gallery, the image gallery within Azure that cannot have the same image with the same version. Uh, okay. Overwrite. Uh, I started to look for uh, uh, locable resources to deal with that. The problem is only kind of development uh, and and staging uh, gallery, not for the production one. But uh, as we have to do PR and work on our computer, that's kind of uh, annoying. Um, I had to stop to go to Puppet, and I know that you guys uh, with Hervé dealt with the, the problem, and, and I think you fixed it. 
yes. uh, with the G uh, garbage collector that is cleaning. No, no, no. The garbage collector is a consequence of Hervé's fix. Hervé's okay. fix is an, a unique version is generated oh yeah with the time by the pipeline on each run and that's that's way easier than the lock solution right. that you started to work oh, yeah. on but at least you learn how the lock work for advanced mm -hmm. use case so you should be able to help user in the future i'm sure jean marc will be happy to learn about it. <laughs> Anyway, so now thanks to uh, Hervé's fix, I was able to, to verify something that did not work months ago. Uh, the version for the gallery require, used to require a strict semantic version without any suffix. But now that constraint has been relaxed, as Hervé found, we can add a suffix. And I think he did even something even more, um, even smarter. I think he's not trying the suffix at all. There is a convention for the, so for the, the version for the uh, dev, so pull request is uh, o dot build number dot a random generated thing, which is always different. And for the staging, there is o, uh, one dot build number dot something. Um, for staging, we only have one build at a time. So that should be easy. And for the dev, yeah, we, we never had more than 12 pull requests at the same time. And just to be sure, we added a garbage collector that removed all the images from the past. Um, so that should be, that should help a lot on cleaning up because we, we didn't add any more issues as underlined by Ashikorp, uh, the person at Ashikorp working on that topic. The, the, the fix that you did, Stefan, so now we don't, export to virtual machine and then add that virtual machine template as a yeah. version in the gallery no now. Machine anymore, yeah. Exactly. That is forbidden for RM64. So now we directly export to shared library, less resources, less time for the export builds. It's already miserable. It's a two, two to five minutes gain on each template. So that's, that's nice. And also now we have the GC cleanup. So yeah, so that should be able to work again. We should be able to retry. I propose we don't put that right now on the milestone, just to, to not tempt you. But if you are bored, don't stay to try again. Sounds Thank good for you. you? Oh, yes. Um, and now we had an issue. Thanks for the work on that. You, you did great, because we should be able to use RM64. And I think we should also be able to open a blog post once we will have succeed on the first usage of Azure. Microsoft will be really happy to hear about that, I'm sure. Don't worry, Bruno or Kevin will be happy to help <laughs> you. You, you read my that. mind, awesome. Exactly. Uh, we had an issue open by a user, thanks for that. That's reports <clears throat> uh, slow pages on Get Jenkins IO, uh, mainly the list of the previous releases. We did the first uh, first set uh, first set of updates that fixed the issue of configuration changes uh, that fixed the problem for slash war dash stable, which is the LTS. However, it's not for the slash war URI, which is weekly history. So the gut feeling is that for weekly, we have too much element on the directory. That's creating a slowness. No more errors, only slow for weekly listing. Um, so Hervé is going to work on this uh, to add needs to observe uh, that a dog integration will be in, should be enabled. So that a set of annotation to set on the pod of the mirror bit service behind Get Jenkins IO, so that they will expose on a private endpoint the data required for Datadog. So that a dog will be able to scrap that private endpoint and report metrics for Apache. We should be able to track the slow requests based on these metrics. The 
the main gut feeling, we suspect that the CIFS protocol used for the underlying Azure file, htdocs, creates this slowness when listing directory. So there is an option of using NFS on the persistent volume instead of CIFS, but that might cost eventually use NFS for full POSIX because that issue is also a packaging issue on the private cluster that where there are some, when it's trying to write a file, it gets permission denied while it's not the case. We have to retry. That issue already existed since years. It appears some time to time. Olivia has been annoyed quite a lot with the Microsoft support and NFS could be the solution here. But that one, but will require a premium storage. So we need to be careful on this one because it can cost a lot. Um, also, there is there is a remediation that could be done using Nginx ingress caching. I mean. These pages are updated once a week, that's all. If, even once a day is okay. So we could we could use the ingress rule since we have Nginx in front of that service that will cache these pages specifically, like we do with ACP for these pages. So that was also the opportunity to clean up the service, less replicas, um, uh, less re uh, more realistic limits for the CPU and memories, so we consume a bit less. So that's still a, a gain that allows us to went from five to four constant nodes on the worker. So that should see uh, economy on credits. So that's all for the work in progress or work to put back to the backlog. So now we need to have a look on first new issues and then backlog, so new issues. Migrate application from system pool to Linux pool on private gates. So thanks Stefan for that issue. That one we need to work on uh, because, so that has been surfaced by the Datadog, uh, the, sorry, yeah, the Datago, Datadog error, Datadog error about disk full system pool disk needs to be increased. So that's the other issue. That one is the priority. The thing is we discover some application are running on the system pool, which is not acceptable. So we need to update this, uh, the Elm chart of this application. So they should not use the system pool, either an anti-affinity or we could add a taint on the system pool and only configure other system to run on the taint. The only worrying part, and we need to check carefully the AKS doc before that, they might have recommendation, but we realize that we have only one node with both core DNS container there. That means we need to manually do the, the operation of the disk. So better to do it tomorrow if it's okay for you, because that will have an impact on breaking the whole cluster time for the operation. That's why running it manually is required outside the cluster. It's not like we had an, uh, another outage to deal with. You're right. Hey. Um, we have one issue, which is, okay, it's a GitHub permission, so not our problem. Okay, and now the backlog. What do we have on the backlog? Enable disk backup for data disk. So that one will move automatically. Um, backup ci.jenkins.io new data disk to be merged into the new instance issue. Is that okay if I close that issue in favor of, and I report on the new new one? 
Yeah, only one issue with the two tasks, yes. Uh, what do we have? We have use WebSocket for agent. So that one I propose not to work on this. The That's part of the performances of CI Jenkins IO. The goal is in for the inbound agent, especially the Kubernetes, instead of contacting the controller through the TCP port 5,000, 50,000, instead it should use HTTPS with a WebSocket protocol connection that has better retries, should use less memory, and should also uh, decrease the amount of disconnected and should be easier to monitor as well. I, I would have tried that for the for the bomb bon, uh, contention. Yeah. Um, yes and no, it's hard to tell because it's hard to monitor the TCP protocol. While WebSocket might or might not help, but yeah. Uh, we could, but the thing is that Right now we have to create a new instance and then we will have to update the Puppet protocol uh, in the Apache server because we need to enable WebSocket at Apache level. Okay. Azure billing shows huge cloud cost due to outbound bandwidth. So we decreased. We only consume half of what we consumed last month. With the artifact manager and the Apache integration on Datadog for CI Jenkins IU, we should have to monitor this next month and see the result. We only have one week of effect of the artifact manager, so we will have to wait a full month to see the results. And last one, we have the cluster public gate. So as discussed with Hervé, that one will move, also we need to start working on this one. I'm thinking particularly on starting to migrate service by service to the new cluster because we need to get rid of this one. Um, one of the first to be migrated for me will be the LDAP. That's a critics uh, critic one, so we should start with this one. Yeah, because it, it, it needs to be improved in A and HA for for the other issue. Yeah. Exactly. So we need a high, high quality network for this one. The next one should be get Jenkins IO so we can test the IPv6 configuration as soon as possible. Here we are. I think that's that's a lot. I have to add that the replay worked for the weekly. Nice. Do you have other topics to treat to ask? I'm stopping the screen sharing. Okay. Maybe the first of May, which is off, but it's not a Wednesday, a uh, Tuesday, I think. Yeah, Monday is off, but Tuesday we will all be there, so yeah, no problem. Perfect. So let me stop the recording. See you next week. Bye bye.